Hey everybody, Ian here with the Seek First Adventure, and today we're going to be working on rebuilding these oval stack windows. These are probably the easiest windows out of all the windows. Uh, they, you know, they, they go together a lot easier, all of that, and so this is going to be just probably just a one part video series on these ones. Um, these I'm actually not keeping dual pane, which is kind of weird, um, but one of the problems is, is that these were the only windows in my Airstream that had glass on the outside and then it had plexiglass on the inside. And the plexiglass obviously being old is just trash, it's all scratched up. And so um, I didn't necessarily want to get glass made, they're a lot smaller. And I just decided that if it was really cold or really hot I could just put like, have like a piece of Reflectix cut that would fit into that opening and then just put that in there. Um, it's not going to block out too much light, and it'll create enough insulation to, you know, be even better than it being dual pane. So, um, so I'm actually going to restore them to just single pane, but um, we'll we'll go through that whole process of how I'm doing that. So to start, um, because of these actually you don't have to take the housing out to work on them. Uh, you can actually re replace them inside the Airstream. Uh, and so this is really a pretty easy process. There's basically just this snap ring that holds the glass in there and um, it, it seats up into the top part of the frame. So you just have to basically, um, this is what I do, and you always want to be careful not to like pry too much on the glass, but I am prying down on the piece and you kind of have to like separate them and then it'll pry and just come right out like that and so you just kind of bend it and work it out <coughs> by pushing down and out on it and then and that comes out and then This one, they had used silicone caulking all around it, so I just have to cut that crap out. to watch for whenever you're cleaning out the frames is there's these little uh, plastic or rubber spacers that go at the bottom and those hold the glass pane basically like in place to where it doesn't just fall down lower into the frame than it should so don't throw those away uh, you could probably like make a new one if they're trashed but uh, it's easier to keep them so from here, I'm just going to remove all of the remaining bottle tape around the inside of the frame. You want to clean that out. Um, and then we'll pull the frame apart. I just use just a putty knife and just scrape around. It takes it off real easy.
spray in there and scrub the rest of that out. Now that we have the frame all cleaned up, the next step is going to be to take apart the two panes of glass and clean all that off and clean the rest of the film off of it. So you're going to get a utility knife and then just cut all the bundle tape, packing or whatever it is, from in between the panes. You can see that there was quite a bit of gaps. so. Wasn't doing a very good job of keeping it sealed. Stuff is all old and brittle. And I'm just getting rid of the old plexiglass because it's all scratched up and just trashed. And then I just like to use the utility knife and just go around the edge of the glass to get the rest of all the bottle tape and stuff off. And then the next thing is to get the utility knife, the X-Acto knife, razor blade, whatever you want to call it, in the holder, and use that to just scrape the tint off. frame cleaned up, got all the gasket material removed off of it. Um, the next thing that I'm going to be doing with the frame is polishing the outside. Um, I think it'll be, uh, is what I'm doing is I'm basically polishing a lot of the pieces separately, giving it a nice rough cut to really um, just get it, get it down to where it needs very little finish polishing whenever I polish the whole Airstream, um, just so that there's no like seam areas or I'm not polishing onto the gaskets and messing those up or getting it all over the windows. So I'm wanting to polish everything kind of separately. It's, you know, I don't want to say overkill. It's very much attention to detail and trying to make it as best as I can, which is just how I am. Um, and then I got the paint pretty much cleaned up. I just need to finish cleaning around the edges and a little bit more of the gunk on it and then it'll be good and then I need to get it tinted. Um, but. I can't get all that done today, so with the magic of television, <clears throat> all right, we have a nice polished frame, and here is the tinted pane all cleaned up and ready to go back in. So we're gonna put it all together next. So whenever I'm doing the reassembly, I put it on a towel partially because I don't wanna scratch up the polish job I've done and also just to keep it clean. You know, my workbench has stuff on it, so that's just to try to keep everything clean. Um, before going in, be sure to clean the glass on both sides. You don't want smudges or fingerprints. It's less crucial on a single pane on the dual panes, you definitely have to be aware of that because you really don't want fingerprint on the inside of the two panes because then you'll be looking at that for the rest of your life and that'll be depressing. So just as an FYI, on the tint I'm using, uh, I believe it's maybe 3M uh, automotive tin, I'm not, I can't remember exactly what they use in place, uh, which brand, but it is automotive tin and it's 35%. So um, it'll still help uh, with the thermal efficiency, but it's not going to be so dark that 
you know, you can't really enjoy the windows and the Airstream. That's a huge reason why, you know, we like the Airstream is because of the big windows. And so we really didn't want to like make them all too dark. So we went with kind of a lighter tint. Inside here, it looks a lot darker than it actually is. You go outside and it looks great. So can't wait to see it all together. All right, so we got that all clean. So the method that I'm using is uh, I, I got the, the gaskets, all the materials and the ideas and the kind of the, the guidelines for this from VintageTrailerGaskets.com. They carry all sorts of um, new manufactured gaskets and seals and all that stuff. It's great. You need to go check them out. They also have tons of information on how to do this. This is a huge part of how I figured out all this. And so I want to make sure to like let you guys know about them. Um, and so they have this, which is, uh, it is used for a lot of like the window and door gaskets. And um, you use it basically as a spacer. So you're going to put it in the inside of the sash, just along that inside edge. And then that is what is the seal for the glass. And then you put the snap ring back in and then you put a spacer in there. So the first part is gonna to be to put this in here. And um, on mine, the weld spot was the top. So I wanna put the seam between them at the top. I'm still gonna, I'm gonna use a, uh, an adhesive, I think I have it out here, uh, to seal those two together, but I still want the seam to be at the top so that the water would go, it's gonna hit down and not leak there. It's much less likely that water's gonna go up into it there, so that'll kinda help with that. got that in there and it's now going to be time to put the window pane in there. So before we put the piece of glass in, I need to basically uh, adhere the two ends of the gasket together. So I'm just using some 3M weather stripping adhesive and I'm just going to put, gonna open it up a little bit in there and spread it a little bit with a screwdriver make sure it's on there and then, then we should be good to put the gasket in or the piece of glass in um, also talk about those little rubber spacers that keep the glass in position um, we're gonna put those back in. I cut them down to where they're smaller. Uh, I found in the first one that I did that if I didn't do that, it would cause the, the, the spacer gasket to kind of push out and it was visible. So I cut those down as small as I could. And then you're just gonna insert those kind of just under, particularly under the gasket in between. Um, and just kind of fit in there and then you'll slide the piece of glass into those. Um, and then we're gonna grab glass and I'm making sure to put the tint on the inside because I don't want it to be on the outside. And then I'm just gonna set it down in, just like that. I got it in those little rubber gaskets. I'm gonna make sure we got it centered up. And Looks pretty good right there. All right. So then the next step is we're gonna put the snap ring back in, and um, you just I just start 
in one corner and you slide it in and then you're gonna just work your way around and then you get the screwdriver and then push it. This is where it can be kind of tricky. You need it to seat up in that part. Careful not to scratch the glass. Fighting a little bit more. Oh, it. Oh, there. there we go. So the last step is to put the spacer in there, which is basically just a like a foam or rubber. Uh, spacer in between the snap ring and the glass. So this can be a little tricky, um, but I found that uh, if you just kind of push down on the glass and then compress it and get it in there, you can get it to go in. It takes some, takes some work, it takes some finagling. I get it started by hand and then I start to use a screwdriver because I find that I can kind of get it in there a little easier that way. And here is the completed window. It is all assembled, polished. It's got the new tint on it. You can see how awesome it looks. And they are now ready to go back in the Airstream. So I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, if you enjoyed it, feel free to like and comment on it. That would be awesome. Also, subscribe to our channel. We're gonna have more videos coming to you, more how-tos, more uh, videos just about who we are and why we're doing this crazy Airstream thing. So um, stay tuned and have an awesome day.